Good evening and thanks for joining us. This is uh, Times News at 8 with me, Wanda Msisia, but first the headlines. Finance Minister Felix Mlusu unveils a proposed national budget of 1.99 trillion kwacha for the 2021-2022 fiscal year. Former ruling Democratic Progressive Party describes the budget as unrealistic. And second lady Mary Chirima urges women and girls to report sexual gender-based violence in higher earning institutions. We have these and other stories. Please stay with us. <laughs> Finance Minister Felix Mlusu has unveiled a proposed national budget of 1.99 trillion kwacha for the 2021-2022 fiscal year. Unlike past trends, this budget will cover a period of nine months. Among the highlights of the budget presented on Friday afternoon at Parliament in Yongwe were continuation of the affordable input program, introduction of a duty-free week for a limited threshold of commodities, and reduction of pay as you earn pay tax percentage rate. Audrey Kapalamula has a report. The 1.9 trillion kwacha budget is a reduction from the 2.3 trillion kwacha budget which will phase out in June this year. Despite the continued effects of COVID-19, Mlusu said real GDP is expected to grow by 3.8% in 2021 and a stable exchange rate of about 780 kwacha per US dollar. Among other key sector allocations, education has received a lion's share of 327.3 billion kwacha, followed by the agriculture sector with 284.4 billion kwacha, and health sector where 187.2 billion kwacha has been allocated. Affordable input program has been allocated 142 billion kwacha to benefit 3.5 million farming families. Mulusu says government has completed drafting three policies that will facilitate provision of free connection of electricity, scrapping off 17,500 kwacha beginning the next financial year, and a similar approach is being worked out for the implementation of free water connections. Government is also introducing a duty-free week to boost the businesses for small-scale traders for imports not exceeding 3,000 US dollars once a year approximately 2.3 million kwacha and the dates for the duty-free week will be gazetted within the year for taxpayers to prepare and benefit from it. On other custom measures, government has introduced free importation of building materials for churches and mosques, removal of value-added tax for materials used for manufacturing of pharmaceutical and medicine apparatus, removal of 10% on import duty of soap noodles used for manufacturing of soap, among others. On income tax measures, government has therefore introduced two new pay as UN brackets of 25% for incomes between 100,000 to 1 million kwacha per month and 40% for incomes of more than 6 million kwacha per month. In order to incorporate the informal sector and widen the tax net, government has made a number of requirements mandatory by introducing a requirement for all citizens to have taxpayer identification number and require TPN when opening a bank account. A tax clearance certificate will also be needed on services and transactions for all people vying for elected public offices and for all regulated professionals, thereby extending coverage beyond lawyers and medical practitioners who already comply, among others. Mulusu says the budget is towards achieving aspirations of the national agenda. And the focus really you know, has been uh, on promoting the private sector, creation of jobs, uh, economic empowerment uh, for uh, uh, you know, uh, the women and indeed you know, uh, the youth. Uh, also, um, we also want to promote you know, the tourism sector, uh, which has been uh, quite severely hit uh, by the COVID-19 pandemic. So that's why we have uh, reduced uh, the visa rates uh, from uh, for multiple entry 
Uh, previously, uh, the, the rates were 150 um, you know, for multiple entry, but we have reduced that now to 80. And for single entry, it was 75. We have reduced that to, to 50. We want to attract more tourists coming into the country so that we can promote our um, you know, tourism sector. Members of Parliament will from next week start scrutinizing the budget before it is approved. And various stakeholders have weighed in their views on the budget. The main opposition Democratic Progressive Party, DPP spokesperson on finance, Joseph Manamveka, says there is no sign that the country's economy can rebound when the Tonse government has failed to outline specific issues that would lead to the economic recovery. According to Manamveka, this is not a good budget as it is projecting an increase in borrowing and expenditure. He explains our reporter Rebecca Chimjeka. I would say that the budget is very unrealistic. Uh, I will say why I'm saying that. And also that the, the very poor people in the village are not going to benefit from this budget. Because if you look at the tax measures, uh, are not favoring the people in the, uh, the very poor people in the village. Actually, it's favoring the rich. Let me start by saying why am I saying this budget is unrealistic? They are, they, are, they are saying that the average uh, exchange rate uh, for 2020-2021 will be 7-8. I'm sure you agree with me that it has already passed that as we speak now. The, uh, as we speak now, the selling rate for the banks is going to 800. And I'm sure it's good, that is going to continue because as you are aware that there is no foreign exchange as we speak now. And also from what the minister has said, there's no budget support. And Rolin Nyasulu is president of the Economics Association of Malawi, Ekama. I think uh, the budget was a tough balancing act um, for the government because we looking at the current situation on the ground in terms of how the economy has been, how the economy is performing, but also looking at uh, the aspirations that the country has. Um, I think it was a, a, a tough balancing act for the government. But we have seen that the government has uh, come up with some measures that may be uh, quite beneficial for the economy. We have seen clear efforts in terms of uh, developing industries and the manufacturing sector. If you look at the manufacturing sector in this country, its contribution to uh, the economy has been going down over the years. Uh, so the manufacturing has not been growing at all and we have seen industries closing down year in year out uh, because of the different challenges that have been faced uh, in the economy. And earlier today, the National Planning Commission had met chairpersons of the parliamentary committees on, to lobby them to focus on priorities that would steer the country towards achieving the Malawi 2063 agenda. The meeting unpacked some of the crucial areas that need to be prioritized and get enough funding using resources that have been allocated to the ministries and departments in the 2021-2022 national budget. Matthews Cassander has the story. NPC Director General Thomas Montari says the ministries get billions of quachas from the national budget, but what is needed thereafter is to make sure that the spending is scrutinized. You see, there are two things that we want the members of parliament to take note of. That when we've defined the path for the country in the Malawi 2063, which even the leadership of the country talked through in the sauna, we should be asking, is the budget now talking to that? Uh, Malawi 2063, and is it talking to the priorities that have been defined? And linked to that is that uh, you oftentimes see that uh, what the Minister of Finance tomorrow will present are lump sums. The uh, Minister of Health will get this much billions, the Minister of Education will get this much billions, and this sector this billions, but the members of Parliament should be then able to scrutinize the quality of the expenditures. Speaker of the House, Catherine Gotani Hara, said the NPC which is supposed to be a driver of development, shared with them some of the interventions to accelerate development of the country. Now they were coming to Parliament to actually share with us some of the measures that they think would be important in terms of interventions to accelerate our development. They gave us a few scenarios, uh, for example, in health, in agriculture and education. For example, 
the importance of having in uh, service training for teachers. They gave us uh, a scenario where they, if you were to train just maybe 700, 800 teachers in service training at a, at a, uh, a cost, uh, how much that will uh, change the quality of the students that will get out of those teachers. This is just one intervention. Hara therefore said the legislators would properly use the information that was shared to them by the NPC. Second lady, Mary Chidima, has urged all women and girls to report any form of sexual gender-based violence happening in higher learning institutions. Madame Chirima made the remarks during a panel discussion aimed at raising awareness on the evils of violence against minors, women and girls held at Chancellor College in Zomba. Thomas Kachir was there and has unfolded this report. Chirima described as sick acts of sex for grades happening in institutions of higher learning. She then urged all girls and women to report cases of sexual violence. It was a wonderful day in terms of uh, raising awareness of the issues that come as a result of gender-based violence in higher education institutions like the Chancellor College. We have learned that there are a lot of cases that are not being reported and that the students do not have recourse to legal action. So today we highlighted those issues and proposed recommendations on the best way forward. The issue is a reflection of what is happening in the wider community of Malawi. And uh, clearly we have uh, a lot of work ahead for us as a community, as a country, to address issues of gender-based violence. As we can see, children are being raped, babies are being raped, students are being raped. They seem to be raped everywhere. However, Minister of Gender, Community Development and Social Welfare Patricia Kaliadi ordered the primary consideration of children when selecting students for accommodation at the Chancellor College. Kaliati was responding to concerns that some minors from Chancellor College are putting up in Chikanda area a situation that puts them at risk. She promised of government support in ending sexual violence on campus. They are going to help us popularizing the sessions which we have, but they are also going to pro be protecting the gay child, and they, they are going to be accessible whenever there is the, the need, especially by the students. And they will probably also uh, uh, advise the law as well. So it is important that in each and every university we need to have a social worker. Plan Malawi International Country Director Fuebe Kasoga said the organization is dealing away with structures that are unfavorable to girls and women. We will be doing a couple more, especially starting next fiscal year, but some in the month of June. We intend to cover all higher institutions of learning as well as uh, secondary schools and combining it with a mentorship program. So that is already part of the work we're planning to do with all our ambassadors. Her owner, Madam Mary, being one of those. Uh, we have the Speaker of the National Assembly plus the two deputy speakers. They are all our ambassadors for our education. The discussion was organized by Plan International and among other attendants included Emma Kalia of Human Rights Resource Center and Professor Gatun Kanchezira. And in a related development, women in rural areas continue to face various forms of abuse but fail to report to authorities due to financial instability brought about by over dependence on men. This has been observed in Hata Bay district where girls are forced to drop out of school to go into marriage and are later prohibited from conducting any form of business to prevent them from being superior to their husbands. More in this report by Patience Lunda. Madas Manda is a mother of four who was asked to drop out of school by her husband after sitting for her junior certificate examinations in 2002. Manda then opted to start a fish selling business but was stopped by her husband who claimed it was a form of disrespect to the man. The man then left Manda with a three weeks old baby in search of greener pastures in South Africa but never returned nor called to check on the family. It is now eight years and Manda is single handedly taking care of the children. He took all the money from my business and told me that his culture prohibits a woman to do business. Since he went to South Africa, he has not called or sent assistance. Estina Mpande is another victim of abuse 
from the district. Mpande narrates how her husband, a former employee of Kawalazi Tea Estate, subjected the family to poverty by using up all his salary on alcohol and blocking her from doing any business. Mpande says her husband was against the idea of empowering her economically because he felt she would loosen up to other men. These are some of the abuses that women in rural areas continue to face but fail to open up in a bid to save their marriages. Nkarabe District Information Officer Patrick Bota admitted that such cases are rampant but the failure to report the cases makes it difficult for them to track them down. Uh, we have brought together a number of partners on the ground that are implementing different pillars the spotlight just put all efforts to put all efforts together to end uh, gender-based violence in, uh, in our district. Meanwhile, People Innovation, a non-governmental organization with financial assistance from Spotlight Initiative, has started working in seven villages in the district where the cases are widespread. People Innovation Project Assistant Rhoda Ngambi said empowering the women with capital to start livestock farming in groups is helping address the challenges. So we'll provide uh, some grant to them and then they will open up a business so that at the end of the day they have something to start up with. Karabe district has a population of about 300,000 people. You're watching news at 8 on Times Television, TTV, Times 360 Malawi, Facebook page. We'll be back after this short break. <laughs> Your gums hurt? Yeah. Does your toothpaste contain sage, eucalyptus, myrrh, chamomile? All that in one toothpaste? Yes, try Colgate Herbal. Colgate Herbal contains nature's best herbs and Colgate's fluoride technology to give you strong teeth and healthy gums. Ah, Colgate Herbal. Let's go. Colgate Herbal for strong teeth and healthy gums naturally. If there's one thing that all soaps do, it's wash. From buckets to basins, bathrooms to streams, and everything in between. <laughs> all soaps wash. Yes, but Protex is different. Its reinvented formula with flaxseed oil boosts your skin's natural anti-germ defenses by 10 times more, protecting you against 99.9% .9 of germs. So what keeps us healthy? Protex! Good health starts here. Tipolole. Pungo nje zira mayuniti ati ene mkuyambida 200 kwa cha kapena kuposi la pamenepo muta ukaya mmozi mwama milione ya muti ene mtipolole promotion. Chakati na mikolola. Chakati na mikolola. Chakati na mikolola. Kumamuka nje zira mayuniti ni 100 kwa cha kapena kuposi la po muti na njia mabonas wa imbida phone ni SMS kapena data pompo pompo. TNM, always with you. Welcome back. You're watching news at 8 on Times Television, TTV, and Times 360 Malawi Facebook page. The National Initiative for Civic Education Nice Trust, with financial support from UN Women, has launched a new initiative called Spotlight, which seeks to eliminate sexual violence against women and children. Nice Trust Executive Director Olen Malungu says the project also seeks to eliminate harmful cultural practices with NICE mostly contributing through transformative civic education. The project will run for two months in Mzimba, Nkata Bay, Doa, Nchisi, Machinga and Nsanje. Malungu explains. This project, uh, NICE is contributing uh, through a theme on, on virus and culture. Uh, 
through what we call transformative uh, civic education. The transformative civic education uh, is aimed to bring about uh, change in society. As you know, that the, one of the major impediments of uh, uh, sexual variance and gender-based variance are embedded in some of our cultural practices, some of them are harmful cultural practices. They are also embedded on a, an equal relationship between uh, men and women based on the uh, resource availability. Commissioner of Police responsible for Northern Region, Richard Luhanga, has said women police officers should take a leading role in fighting gender-based violence if the country is to end the vice. Commissioner Lungu said this after receiving a report on a three-day operation in the Northern Region. From Zuzu Sam Kalimira reports. Southern Africa Regional Police Chiefs Cooperation Organization, nicknamed Basadi Operation, started in Botswana. The operation started when a female officer proved to the world that a woman can equally perform any duties just like men counterparts. In Malawi, women police officers conduct almost all operations such as roadblock checks, traffic and patrols, and it is observed for three days. In Mzozo, the women in uniform marched from Katoto Ground to Northern Region Police Headquarters where they presented a report to Commissioner Richard Luhanga. Speaking in an interview, Luhanga said time has come for police women to be real champions in fighting against gender-based violence. It's easy for women to talk to fair women. So if the women become the champions, of the, gen of the fight against gender-based violence. It's very easy for the police service to get the information. It's very easy for us to develop strategies that are informed by the evidence that is coming from the ground. And these women can play a very big role in collecting that evidence. Remember, police officers will have evidence. So we, the, all our approaches towards the fight against gender-based violence, they need to be evidence-based. Chairperson of Malawi Police Women Network in the Northern Region, Gift Kambiri, has since asked girls in the country to be strong and focused if they are to achieve their goals. Uh, my message to the girls out there, I'm saying they should not look down upon themselves. They have to stand strong, stand firm, that even us women, we can do more than men. You can see during these three days we managed to do all these activities which also men can do, us as, as women we can also do. During the operation, the women officers managed to arrest suspects selling Indian hemp, deferrers and also illegal immigrants among others. Japanese ambassador to Malawi, Satoshi Iwakili, believes scientific leadership and investment in scientific and technological enterprise are required to achieve economic growth. Iwakiri said this as he handed over a donation of books to Malawi University of Science and Technology Masti on behalf of Nippon Foundation. Our reporter, Luele Nimbasa, has filed this report read in our studios by Elita Soko. Speaking when presenting the donation, the Japanese ambassador to Malawi, Satoshi Iwakiri, said science and technology is vital for the economic growth of this country. Iwakiri says science and technology hold the key to the progress and development of any nation. You know, the science and, techno science and technology is uh, very important for the, uh, the economic growth of this country. Here in Malawi, the, there are so many human resources. So the education is a very important. Here, MUST is now the trying to create some new technology in the uh, ceramics, also the food processing, etc. In that sense, maybe the we Japanese 
uh, in Japan, maybe we have some technology for the contributing this kind of areas. Vice Chancellor for Master Professor Adres Malata said for any successful economy, in today's quest for knowledge based economies, science and technology are the basic requisites for growth. So this is a very important visit. As we've heard from the ambassador, he was visiting the southern region for the first time since he came to Malawi and he decided that one institution he would visit here would be must. And also not just coming to visit because his, he has his interest in science, technology and innovation because of the background of, the, of their country. So his visit to this institution is very, very important. And also the books we have received. You've seen the books are about engineering, they are about governance, they are about politics, about every program that we offer here at MAST. And so many books have been donated, uh, but he also says that there will be more books coming, there will be more equipment coming. He has seen our facilities, he has seen our gaps and he would like to see those things happen at this institution so that we can improve our quality of teaching and learning. Japan has pledged to be a valuable source of advanced technology, human capital in development and cooperation on social and economic growth capacity with critical emphasis on education systems that are vibrant and well equipped in modern libraries and laboratories within these institutions of learning. And in business news, in a bid to improve customer satisfaction, Vivo Energy, operators of engine filling stations in the country, have launched a triple check project. The project aims at giving people the right quality, quantity and service. In addition, the company has also launched a website which will help customers to give feedback on the company's services. More in this report by Justin Ingwewo. Vivo Energy Malawi Managing Director Shaban Kayungilo said the project will be ongoing for customer satisfaction. He added that this also targets at giving assurance to their customers that they will get maximum attention. We believe that uh, the moment the customer you know, is able to, to, to get those three, definitely there will be total you know, uh, service delivered to our customers. And with that, we stand for it, and uh, not only during the campaign, and they, but uh, even over the campaign. It is the way we do our business across the country and uh, across the continent. One of engine feeding station managers, Anganite Mkisi, applauded the company. She added that they will make sure that they implement the values. It's a very good uh, initiative. It's going to help us uh, curb any uh, issues that we have with customers in terms of quality, in terms of quantity, in terms of service. We are sure with a new campaign that our services will be 100%. Uh, they will be perfect, they will be good. Engine has 30 service stations across the country. And that item concludes the news, but before we go, headlines again. Finance Minister Felix Mlusu unveils a proposed national budget of 1.99 trillion kwacha for the 2021-2022 fiscal year. Former ruling Democratic Progressive Party describes the budget as unrealistic. Second Lady Mele Chirima urges all women and girls to report any form of sexual gender-based violence happening in higher learning institutions. You've been with me, Wonder Msisia. You can get more on these and other stories by visiting our website, www.times.mw, liking our Facebook page, Times360 Malawi, and following us on Twitter at Times360 Malawi. Remember to wash your hands regularly, observe social and physical distance, and mask up. Please stay safe. Continue watching the rest of the programs. Good night.